What a treat I have for you today in the form of Chris Stapleton singing a tribute to Prince live in one of his concerts with the infamous worldwide global hit called Nothing Compares to You. Now it's synonymous obviously with the Irish legend that recently died, Sinead O'Connor, God rest her. But her memory still lives on in other people doing their performances of the Prince song that he had written. Great story behind this. And what I've decided to do is because the lyrics are short and sweet, I'm going to give you a bit about Chris, a bit about the song, we'll hear the song and come back for the story after. That gives you a little bit of background to a song that you know famously, but probably like myself, didn't know the actual details concerning it. And it's interesting and it's fun. And it's part of what I do, it's a bio channel. But first of all, let's introduce and welcome for the first time to my channel, the very famous, award-winning, popular, and just gifted in every sense of the word musically, Christopher Alvin Stapleton. He's an American singer-songwriter, guitarist, record producer, born in Lexington, Kentucky, and grew up in Staffordsville, Kentucky. In 2001, Stapleton moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue an engineering degree from Vanderbilt University, but dropped out to pursue his musical career. And millions of fans are glad that he's done exactly that, because what he's achieved is phenomenal. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Subsequently, Stapleton signed a contract with Seagale Music to write and publish his music. And I'd say, they are sitting there going, Chris is releasing another song. Yeah. I'm just counting from the profits from the last. He's that popular, trust me, and he makes that much money. In 2018, Stapleton has amassed credits, writing, co-writing over 170 songs. And you, like me, don't really know of them. Well, that's what my channel's about, to bring us together, me and you as one to savour a live performance by this guy. I could play many, many videos, but I think there's nothing like the crowd, his fans, singing a song to a legend prince, one that we all know through the legend herself, Sinead O'Connor, and I've done an extraordinary thumbnail, I've created it in advance for this particular song and rendition by Chris to attract as many people as I can because you will be glad you've been introduced to him. His co-written six number one country songs. His songs have appeared on many artists' albums, including Adele. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. He has co-written with several artists, including Sheryl Crow, Ed Sheeran. And you still haven't heard of him? Well, to be honest, a fan recommended him, and I wasn't really aware of the depth of his career, but boy am I going to catch up. The awards to finish off, Stapleton has received numerous awards and nominations. Recipient, eight to date, probably even more. Grammy Awards, 10 Academy of Country Music Awards, 14 Country Music Association Awards, five Billboard Music Awards, two Hard Radio Music Awards, amongst others. For his work as a composer, he's received nine ASCAP Country Awards. That is everybody, the American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers. Imagine he's received nine of those awards, including the very lucrative Van Gogh Award in 2019, Stapleton was recognised by the Academy of Country Music as the inaugural ACM Artist Songwriter of the Decade, not the year. Traveller was Billboard's top country album of the decade. That's who we've missed out on, but today I'm going to rectify that with a song, Nothing Compares to You. I'm going to give you that interesting story about this song straight after and it incorporates Prince and Sinead O'Connor's version and we'll talk about Chris's once we've heard of it. Nothing Compares to You, as we all know, uh, um, was written by Prince but Sinead O'Connor made a very 
sober, dark version of the song that deals with the pain of loss and loneliness. It's people are skeptical what whom Prince wrote it about, and I'm going to incorporate that in my story after the song and give you the facts. Now the lyrics track the singer's sense of loss and longing and his love, well it says her love here, has left her. Nothing, she has turned to all sorts of temporary abstractions and comfort, but nothing truly compares to that special person who is no longer in their life. The song ultimately reaches a hopeful conclusion after being, after the person being willing to try again when the time is right. That's what the song's about. This is Chris's version. Let's enjoy. And come back for more bio on the song. It's very interesting. It's been so
come on. <laughs> well done. No, we appreciate you, Chris. You took me to a new level with that song. I rose and arose with spiritually. I really did. I felt, I don't know about you when you hear that for the first time. That was my honest to God first time hearing that. I am so glad I saved, you know, this video to be on a Sunday, which it is today, to give almost a spiritual up lifting that we all need in this world you might not be religious but god i felt religious listening to that i could have almost been in a church situation in my head i just felt i was in that church and chris was bringing me bringing me and if i never experienced a godlike moment in my life i just have there listening to that voice and that beautiful updated now stamp marked chris stapleton's version of nothing compares to you. Who would have thought all these years later, a few decades later, that a man of his stature would have taken on a song and almost smashed Sinead O'Connor's version, which I am not disparaging what Sinead O'Connor did. And I was going to make a quip here, but it would be in bad taste, about when Sinead O'Connor ripped up the Pope's picture. The only thing Chris lacked was to rip up but look, decades later, she was proven right in her background of abuse and why she did that. And we all got to know the story as to that particular moment that actually destroyed her career in America when that happened. Chris, you salvaged the song. You brought it to life. You brought it into the future in a gospel way. And I just felt elevated. And it's almost like, a godlike moment listening to you it's that good of a voice clarity of a voice it doesn't matter if that was a, a fan-made homemade video a lot of videos are today i can only thank god we have a country singer of worth like you and somebody with the clarity and deliverance that just lifts you I wanted to be lifted and that's why I saved this song because I love this song so much and in my head I hear Sinead singing and, and singing but now I know for a fact she's looking down smiling clapping her hands saying yes I'm glad CC you're getting in the world to hear this version because isn't it funny how you're stigmatized in the music career with a song and almost everybody forgot about Sinead O'Connor's catalogue of incredible songs and I'm going to attach Sinead O'Connor's one of my reactions since her death to this in honour of the song itself nothing compares to you and the two artists who have shared that song I think that would be a nice tribute to both so moving on with what I want to tell you so when it comes to the song and remember it's you know the song ultimately reaches a conclusion even in Chris's deliverance of being willing to try again about a relationship but people argued you know it wasn't about that but nevertheless way back it was one of the biggest ballads of the 90s helped by the iconic music video and powerful vocal performance of our own Irish Sinead O'Connor at the time. Now Sinead's version of this Prince song topped the charts around the world and still remains one of the greatest power ballads of all times. I don't think that'll ever go away. But it did stigmatize it and it overshadowed the incredible array of amazing music she produced thereafter. And people just associated her with being shaved head back singing that song. But at least her memory never dies. That's one thing. Now, what inspired it and what did Sinead 
and how did Sinead come to record it is what I want to because we all are still associated with Sinead and I think from today it will be Chris but let's go back a little following Sinead's death at the age of 56 there's been some interesting facts that has emerged about the song now Prince wrote it as we know and in 1985 funk band The Family was created as an outlet to release Prince's music and a version of the song appeared on their only album also called The Family. Prince later released a live duet version with Rosie Gaines in 1993 that most people don't know about but that's what I'm about giving you this information but his original 1984 recording was not released until 2018 when it was issued as a single by Warner Brothers. So why did Sinead O'Connor cover the song then? And how did she get away with covering it early? And it was part of a seed that made Prince, because of the popularity and what Sinead became of the song, his song, a song he never released and never put out there, but she took and made a cover of it, there was friction as you're going to hear. The song itself, Chris Hill was the director of O'Connor's label, label at the time and sign, said that Mr. O'Kelly, Sinead's manager, brought in a cassette and when I heard it, I actually started crying. I just sat there with tears in my eyes. Then O'Kelly rang up Sinead O'Connor and went, Chris is crying. Was it that bad, Sinead asked. Like many Prince's songs, the star never clarified if there was any particular inspiration behind the song, everybody. It's open to interpretation. O'Connor later said of the song, I think I'm probably similar to millions of people who loved this song and were all people who associated the song with a loss of some kind. While many assume that the song is about a, a lost lover, others have said that it was actually inspired by Prince's housekeeper named Sandy Scipone who left him to be with her family after her father died. Prince's recording engineer, Susan Rogers, later said Sandy was the person who made sure he had his favourite beverage, which was Five Alive at the time, and she made sure the house was clean and that there were fresh flowers on the piano and that the socks and underwear were washed. That might have been the inspiration. So Dirty Linen can inspire you to write a song like this? Wow. His famous music video was directed, and this is back to Sinead O'Connor, by John Mabry at the time. He directed the video for West End Girls by Pet Shop Boys and also directed the movies The Jacket and the Edge of Love. Now, the video the, with Sinead mostly has a close-up of Sinead's face as she sings through the feelings of sadness and anger while singing the lyrics. The other segments see her walking through the Parc de Saint-Claude, Parc de saint Cloud in Paris. By the end of the video, two years are seen rolling. Two tears, sorry, are seen rolling down her face, one on each cheek. So not a Meghan Markle at the Queen's funeral. <laughs> anyway, O'Connor later said that the tears were real. She didn't expect to cry, but then thought, "I should just let this happen." She explained that the tears came after thinking about her mother, who died in a car accident in 1985. So real tears in a real video, and a song, and a song written by a legend, sung by a legend. Now, how did it perform in the charts? Worldwide hit, four weeks at number one, third best-selling single of 1990 in America, certified platinum by the Record Industry of America in April of 1990. Yes, but it didn't go well according to Sinead. Now, this is the bit before we leave. Speaking about her relationship with Prince, and people asking her, did you actually meet him up to taking the song and covering it? And she said, I did meet Prince a couple of times, but we didn't get on at all. In fact, we had a punch up. He summoned me to his house after nothing compares to you. I made it without him. I'd never met him. He summoned me to his house, and it's foolish to do this to an Irish woman. He said he didn't like me saying bad words in interviews. So I told him to, and because of YouTube's words, I'm going to change it to feck off. He got quite violent. I had to escape out of his house at five in the morning. He 
packed a bigger punch than mine. Ooh. Now, since then, in between Chris's version and others, there's been a 2016 release by Chris Cornell. Madonna performed it at the 2016 Her Version Billboard Music Awards. And it's also been covered by the great legendary Rita Franklin in 2014. But back up to today, I hope you've enjoyed the latest, greatest, and for me, the most uplifting version of the song since Sinead O'Connor by Chris Stapleton. I'll be back to give you what Chris is all about in one of his own songs, I promise, very, very soon. But until then, it's 2023 approaching Christmas. Let's all get into the Christmassy move. I've been uplifted by Chris, so I'm looking forward already to reacting to my next video. Until the next Chris video, take care.